Hi and welcome to this first session out of several on how to create realistic materials on an object. And the reason that you see a lantern in front of you is because that is what you selected on Facebook when I asked you what do you want a realistic material on. This will be, as I said, several sessions because I will go through everything from the beginning to the end. So first preparation and what to think about and how to think. And then we create a new lantern and then we let it age until it's going to pieces, you can say. So uh, to start everything, I think that you just download the file that you have in the comments in the link below and after that you will have what I have uh, excluding the reference images those you have to find yourself okay so uh, first of all what to think when creating realistic material well the first thing and it's the same if you're doing the model is that you need a lot of reference images so that's why I have all these images here. And the only difference between reference images for a model and a reference image for the material is that you can also include a lot of images that are only on the material. And it doesn't have to be on a lantern. It can be whatever that is or should be mixed with your object. So if you're working with metal, and you want to see how metal decay in your case, then you just select a lot of images on that as well. So then you have a full library of reference images. So as you can see here, I have some one that's very old, so you can see all the rust and so on. And I have a lot of different types here. Uh, you can see some that are more like cleaned because this is a tool or an object that uh, people use a lot and uh, they take care of some of those in a way. So they clean them and make them good looking and so on. But still it's something that it's outside and uh, it's worked with a lot. So that means that they also get some rust on it and so on, even if you take care of it. So we have a lot of images here. You can see when you refuel it, how the leak will be around in a typical day when you're not so perfect and hit that hole in a good way. Uh, so we have a lot of things. We also have a lot of kind of models. So uh, we can look at different types of models here to see. Uh, what I have done is try to find similar models to the one that we are going to work with. So as you can see, a lot of reference images. So that is the first step. The next step is to look at the model itself. So I can change this into the model here. So if I go to my 3D viewport and I can take away that, so we only have the model here. Then this is not made by me. I made some small changes on it, but this is a friend that gave it like three years ago to me, uh, just to have on things like this when I'm doing tutorials. So it's good for me that you asked for a lantern because that I already had, so I didn't have to model it. I have done small adjustments to make it perfect for making material on, but in a, in a base, it's not me that done it. Okay, uh, what to think about when it comes to the model? Well, if you're going to do realistic material on it, then it's uh, vital that you have some polygons. So it should not be a low poly, it should be rather high poly. If you have too much of uh, polygons, then it will be hard to work with. So it's a middle line, but always try to have rather high poly. Most techniques are using the geometry on your model, so uh, more polygons will give a better result. Then you bake the result and you can do a topology on your model and get it to be a bit lower in polygons. But when you're doing the material, 
then have it rather high. And if I go to the wireframe, you can see it's not that high in this, but it's okay to have it in this uh, level here. It doesn't have to be more than this here. And you can also control it with the modifier here. So you have um, different types of, of uh, subdivision on it. And that is a really good and simple way to work because then you can have a viewport of one. So you have lower amount of uh, polygons here and then you can uh, render that is two and so on. Okay, uh, so that is one thing. Use a high amount of polygons. Then the next thing is to have it in real life scale. So if I'm going to do a lantern, I will try to keep it around the same scale as you can find in reality. Because both the material and texturing that you put on, as well as the light, uh, will be affected by the scale. So if you have like a default blender, with uh, two meters cube from the start and then try to model from that one without thinking about the scale you will get a very big lantern in the end that is like three meters big and it will be hard to work with when it comes to the texturing and with the light so if you put in uh, 60 watts uh, light nothing will happen because this is like three meters tall in this case, we have something that is like three decimeters, and that is about the correct size for this lantern. So always think about the scale. That is very vital when working with uh, material here. Then everything, if we go to scale again and think a little bit, go to uh, dimension here, then you have the correct scale here. But it's also vital that you use the correct scale here. So if you have scaled something in object mode, then you always, always have to go and apply the scale. Otherwise the material will not work in a good way because then the scale that you select on different types of texture will be completely wrong in the end. So it's easier to work with and more correct if you apply the scale all the time when you're doing something. Another thing that people also do a lot of is that they rotate things and then you get a rotation that is not correct here. So I will also suggest that you apply the rotation in most cases because we will work with the three directions of the X, Y, and Z here. And if we have a rotation, then it will be wrong in some cases if we're working with the local axis on the part of the object that we are working with. So, so always uh, try to have a correct rotation and a correct scale and a correct dimension. And also when working, then we need light, of course. And light should be, if I go to render view here, should be both uh, some type of HDRY, as you can see here, I use something, and that one is included in your file. Uh, I think this is a rather good uh, image to use when I work with uh, something that should look metallic, then I normally use this uh, background here, because it gives like a gray light on uh, every object that you work with that is uh, also a little bit outside even if it's inside but it's not so the sun is striking on it it's more evenly spread out and it works fine when I'm doing the material here uh, since this is an uh, HDR uh, it's also affecting a lot on your material so if you have a lot of green in this you can get a green look on your material even if it's no green in it because the reflection will be green from the environment. So select a good HDRY and then uh, try to do some basic setting of lighting. So I do a three point light here uh, where I put those rather high up just to avoid to get too much reflection into the glass here. And then I also have some background lighting here 
to uh, make some rim light from my object and it will look good when we're working with the new uh, lantern in the beginning and it can be so that we change this light later on when that uh, lantern will decay. So uh, lighting very very important when starting to work and after that it's just to uh, start look at the reference images and start adding material uh, to make it work in a good way i have also uh, grouped everything together here so it's very easy to select if i should work with the ground or if the light or if i should work with the light or if i should work with the lantern and in the lantern i have also selected here so if I will work with the glass, then I select the objects for the glass, and now it's only one object. And if I want to select with a non-colored metallic, meaning no paint, uh, then I just select the objects there, and you get all the of those. And the colored material, the same thing, select objects, and then we get the colored. And the reason for that is, of course, that uh, in the base settings, the material for uh, the color material metal here or the colored parts uh, will be the same material and the same with the non-colored metallic that will have the same material and the glass will have that material so the basic setting will be only like three types of material but then we need to tweak of course a lot of things on each little part here so if we look at like color metal you can see it's one two three four five six seven eight different small objects that build this lantern that are colored so it could be that some of the settings that we work with for one part will not work so good for another one and then we have to tweak it so when you have everything in place then we can look in the next session so I will just see you there and then we start with creating a brand new lantern for you. So bye for now and see you in the next session.